What's up, everybody? I am Taja Norman. Make some noise. So today I'm going to be performing my poem called What Has Residence in Your Heart? And it goes like, what has residence in your heart? Is it love, fulfillment, or spite that's razor sharp? Don't let this cold world tear your well-being apart because each day we're renewed and you're walking in your fresh start. Each day is a blank canvas. So what's going to be today's art? Self-reflect and have some respect because what's on the inside shows and you probably won't forget. Get rid of the spite. It's like a poisonous bite. Your heart's burden will be heavy instead of light. When it comes to internal fights, all you got to do is take a first-class flight. It's a life as a way you walk the runway to eternity where there's no dismay. Check what has resonance in your heart and bask in the ruah or fresh winds of your fresh start. You are the light, so why are you presenting energy that represents the dark? You have a flourish for a future ahead of you, so stop procrastinating on making your mark. That was what has resonance in your heart. Thank you. she didn't realize this. She looked in the mirror, an expression of disappointment would cover her face and she would hiss. Disappointed, wishing that she was mixed, was on top of her wish list. Previously not proud of her African American hair, this part of her life was a total nightmare. Social media's beauty standards made her unaware of her beautiful hair. She thought that the way her hair looked devalued her as a person. She thought that her hair was too short and nappy and this didn't make her happy. When she get extensions, <laughs> Her self-esteem would skyrocket to another dimension. She came to the realization that she has to love her own hair and have more self-admiration. Head wraps, scarves, and wearing hoodies constantly were getting old. How could she help it though when comments like, you don't have good hair, or your hair is so short is something that she was told. Temporarily, it planted a seed of self-hate, wishing that she wasn't only black. When she crossed the bridge of self-love, she realized that self-hate is the only thing that she should lack. Going natural was one of her best decisions. She wore her crown proudly. Finally, she is risen. Her former mentality ruined her individuality, making her compare her hair to others. Her hair, she no longer wanted to cover. Going natural made her feel so free and never wanting to go back. Moving forward, she'll never return to that self-hate trap. Her black girl magic won't allow it. That's forbidden. For a while, her true desires concerning her hair were hidden. She wanted to lock her hair, and many people tried to change her mind. However, her mind was made up, and that was the bottom line. She'd appreciate it if others stated their opinion about her decision while still being kind. There are sometimes negative comments about her hair, but when she's fresh out the salon, whoo, they can't help but stare. Bantu knots, pinups, her crown styles are so interesting and creative. It reminds her of the fact that from the motherland, she and her ancestors are natives. Being a natural beauty in an artificial world sets her apart. Her wonderful locks are a work of art. Every single one evolving and growing. Over time, it just keeps on going. Wash days feel like a magical waterfall over her crown. In the background, salon conversation is the only sound. Temple massages and therapeutic washes feel so good. That's her favorite part. She won't allow negative comments about her hair to cause her self-love to fall apart. Changing her hair taught her one of her greatest life lessons. You can't please everyone. All she knew was that she conquered that internal battle and won one. I am Taja Norman, and you just heard I am not my hair. Thank you so much. Awesome. awesome. Can y'all feel that? I mean, the reason we've all gathered, the celebration of our emancipation, and simply because black lives really do matter. Our lives matter, have worth meaning, importance, significance, value, long before someone rode in on a horse and told us it was true. Fierce 
independence was already our portion. In spite of our blood, sweat, and tears that made plenty of men fortunes, yet we are rich in resiliency and tenacity. I mean, we would have to be to endure the brutality of bigotry more recently blatantly broadcasted for all the world to see. Black exploitation at its finest. And all we ever wanted was to really just find us a place in this world, a face in this world. A black man in a black face is more than a black man can face in this world where black men have been put on an endangered species list with a target on his back. You could say it's an oxymoron, or I could say it's a fact. For over 400 years, our ancestors endured unthinkable, unimaginable, heinous acts. And while we commemorate the evolution of a freedom we've yet to see in its entirety, we tire of seeing hashtags as memorials for human beings, not three-fifths of a person, someone else's property, chattel goods, not confined to iron bars, housing projects, ghettos, and hoods. The stock we come from is gooder than good. We've been driven and scattered from Greenwood, driving with a green book. Got us walking the green mile for some green to give to some crooks. Slavery stains steep deep into the richest soil of Mississippi's plains, fertilized by 10,000 widow slaves. The seeds of a bitter crop harvested untold affliction, pain, and grief. Strange fruit ain't hanging in the streets no more. It's scattered in the streets. Tormented and terrorized right in front of the eyes of our loved ones. Left with no other option than to withstand it or run. Can y'all feel that? Righteous indignation. It's absolutely absurdly insane when you hear the lies, excuses, and justifications for our colonization that led to marginalization, gentrification, all the while fighting segregation and discrimination, and we the ones that built the nation. But it came to pass, freedom had finally come at last. The last slaves from Texas were the last to know. General Granger rode into Galveston and said, we let y'all people go, but um, don't expect no handouts. Don't be hanging out without a job. We don't want you to know we trying to set you up to rob us from what we robbed you of. Seems like paying for liberty on layaway. You see how long it took to make Juneteenth a national holiday. But ain't nothing been said about all our back pay while black men right away wrongly convicted. Y'all say it's a good start. We say you got us twisted. Not everything face can be, can be changed, James said. But nothing can be changed till it's faced. And we've been graced for this place. Pioneers of a promised way, and I promise you, we'll keep making good trouble. Until then, we'll rejoice in Jubilee Day. God bless you. All right, so my next poem is called Keys to Wealth. It goes like, one key to heaven wealth is having your assets pay for your liabilities. This is the echelon to ultimate freedom and stability. I highly encourage you to utilize the asset of humility in order to pay for the liability of hostility. I just want you to smile, live in abundance, and drop some gems in the comments if you're feeling me. I also recommend that you do some self-inventory, find the good in your story, trailblazing territory, put your thoughts in category. While you're at it, make it auditory to surround the 1% with bliss and glory. Would you do that for me? Or most importantly, for yourself? Desire for lost your love and self-fulfillment before monetary wealth? Because filigaria or the love of money can destroy your mental health? Just pay for the liabilities of the lies, the failed tries, and the skies of living two lives with the assets and no soul debts, self-respect, and no regret. Put as much effort into getting your soul right like you do with getting your money right. Your glowing girl will then reside in the spiritual spotlight. That was Keys to Wealth by the one and only your girl Taj Norm, also known as Taj Norman. You can follow me on Instagram at Taj Norman, that is spelled T-A-H-J. N-O-R-M, and also check out my podcast, the Flourish and Footprints podcast. There's a new episode every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for my motivational enthusiasts. Thank you so much. <laughs>